Ayun. Hello teachers. Good afternoon. Maraming magandang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Muli, uh, sa ngalan po ni Sir Franco na nasa probinsya ngayon at may problema ng konti sa kanyang internet. Uh, ako po muna ang hahalili bilang host sa araw na ito sa ating activity dito sa Introduction to Role Jack and Panel Discussion with Filipinas Team. Pero bago po ang lahat, teachers, uh, tawagin po, po natin ang iba nating mga kasamahan. Sana i-share po natin ang link para mas marami tayong makasamang manood dito sa ating activity ngayong hapon na ito. At hello, Kaduo. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagsali. At uh, umpisan po natin muna sigurong batiin ang ating mga kasamahan na nandito sa ating uh, chat ngayon. Kaya teachers, kung uh, ilagay din po natin sa ating comment section o sa ating chat kung uh, saan po tayo ngayon o saan po tayo nagtuturo. Umpisan po natin kay Ma'am Jenilyn. Hello. Kay Pastor Manny. Magandang hapon po. Oo, sir. Medyo maulan ngayon. Kaya hello, hello din. Kay Sir Alan. Good afternoon. Kay uh, Sir Jeffrey na palagi po natin nakakasama sa iba't ibang events ng Kaagapay Teacher Support. Prof. Uh, Dr. Manalavan. Kay Ma'am Cheryl Torres, magandang hapon po. Uh, sabi niya, quite excited with the insights I'm about to gain from this engagement. Yes, Ma'am Cheryl, abang-abang lang po tayo. Siguradong sigurado po ako na ibang uh, putahin na naman sa gamit ng EdTech tool ang ating matutunghayan ngayong hapon. Kay uh, Teacher RM Anna Lizelle, magandang hapon po. Kay Ma'am Estelle Gomera. Kay Kaduwo Joseph Educado, kay Sir, uh, kabanding ko po ito, lagi po natin nakakasama din si Car uh, Sir Carl Sapungan. Ma'am Jeneline Carvalho, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, uh, Teacher Akoni Maukini. Si Ma'am Roxanne May Partivo, magandang hapon po, magandang hapon po. Uh, Teacher Henry, Teacher Gemma, good afternoon. Good afternoon din po kay... Uh, Ma'am Jenna, Ma'am Aina, Sir Jonel, Dean Clifford Haume, magandang hapon din po. Sir Danilo Ekat, uh, Ma'am Manas Vashita, and Ma'am Bel Belia Lovendino. So mag magandang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Teachers, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsali sa atin ngayon. Muli, uh, Kahalinihan ko lang po si Sir Franco. So Sir Franco is still with us. Nasa, he is directing our event for today. At uh, meron lang pong konting uh, glitch sa kanyang internet or connectivity. Pero let's assure that this is well prepared by Sir Franco para sa ating lahat, para sa ating mga teachers. So teachers, nandito po tayo ngayon sa Introduction to Role Jack and Panel Discussion with Filipinas Team. Para... Bigyan lang po tayo ng ano, kung ano po ang i-expect natin ngayon dito. This is Rolja, isang bagong edtech tool na ating magagamit sa ating pagtuturo. At ang ating diskusyon mamaya, umaatika pong diskusyon kasama ang Filipinas team o tinatawag nating mga Rolja champions dito sa Pilipinas na sila yung mga grupo ng teachers mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas mula elementarya hanggang kolehiyo na nag-explore na po ng Rolja para mas maintindihan ng mga guro at maipakita sa mga guro ang gamit ng role jack dito sa ating bansa at sa ating konteksto ngayon. Kaya, teachers, hindi ko na po patatagalin. Ang ating speaker ay ipapakilala na po natin kung sino ang mag, magpapakilala ng ating role jack dito sa atin. Napakaswerte po natin ngayon, teachers, dahil mismong co-creator ng role jack ang ating makakasama at ang CEO din ng Rolja. Pa ating pakilala po. He is a developer.
konting. Ayun, muli, pasensya po, nagkaroon tayo ng konting glitch siguro sa connection natin ngayon kasi maulan. So muli po, ating papakilala ang ating speaker ngayon. Um, he is a developer by training, yet a business owner by trade. He is one that believes deeply in the power of learning. He is an avid communicator about design thinking and continues to champion its importance wherever he goes. So, teachers, sa ating mga kasama na nanonood dito po sa Introduction to Role Jack and Panel Discussion, let us all welcome the CEO and co-founder of Role Jack, Mr. Aditya Batura. Hey! Hello, Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon to the entire Oljak Filipinas uh, community. How, how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> for your talk for this afternoon, most especially yeah, for too, our me teachers. Too. Me too. So, uh, Sir Adi, maybe before we start, can we give us, uh, in a nutshell, what could be your, uh, what is this topic all about, or what is Roljak all about? <laughs> Roljak, in really a nutshell, or in just a sentence, right, um, is our attempt to unlock future-ready learning skills in any classroom seamlessly, right? Our vision with Rolljack is to provide a platform where collaborative, innovative, and creative um, mindsets come alive in any classroom, and those can be plugged into any modality of teaching or any um, subjects. And that's as simple as what it is. Okay. So thank you very much, Sir Adi, for that. Um, and then teachers, let us all say hello and say, say welcome to our speaker for today, Sir Aditya from Roljack. So Sir Adi, I will, I will be giving, uh, uh, lending, uh, giving you the floor already. Take it away. And teachers, let us all listen to the discussion as Mr. Adi introduces Roljack to us here in Kaagapay Teacher Support. Sir Alvin, thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I really so, appreciate it. So while, okay. while waiting uh, for for this, so Siguro teachers, once again, let us uh, give, let us welcome Sir Adi as he gives us his, uh, is this your, I think this is your second time giving a talk in the Philippines, Sir Adi. That right? is right. Yeah. That is right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think we have a very strong community of educators here in the Philippines, and um, you know, we we are just very honored to you know to have such a um, strong and uh, qualified uh, educators who really understand the vision and get behind the vision of what we are trying to achieve with Rojack. Okay, thank you for that. So, teachers, once again, let's uh, I'll give the floor to Sir Adi so that he'll be introducing and discussing all about Rojack to us. Ngayong hapon po. Kaya stay po tayo at enjoy sa discussion ni Sir Adi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sir Alwyn. I really appreciate that. So uh, good afternoon to everyone who's here on the call with us. Uh, my name is Aditya and I think Sir Alwyn has given a very good introduction of me. And I am, in fact, a developer and a software engineer by training. Um, but of course, yes, I am a, an entrepreneur and a business owner by trade. And um, really just Rolljack came about as, as just an idea of how we could potentially create fun learning experiences in, in unlocking creative exercises in classrooms that has developed into a platform that is a lot more than just that. So uh, a little bit of a background. Um, so I'll rewind to before we actually started, you know, building Rolljack. So... Uh, I actually, um, we, we started running our company as a training company where we were doing a lot more training in future ready skills such as STEM skills, uh, coding, robotics, and design thinking. And we were running these programs, not just in schools, but also in companies with corporate training. And a lot of what we uncovered during that time was that there is this huge disjoint of bringing such skills and mindsets uh, into classrooms because most of these things happen in silo, meaning um, you can't run 
you know, future ready skills such as you can't run design thinking programs or creative thinking programs in a classroom that teaches mathematics. So uh, this is a true story where we ran uh, two, a two full day uh, boot camp for public school educators, teaching them the basics, uh, the fundamentals of design thinking. And at the end of it, you know, a lot of the teachers came up to me and said, hey, this is great. I'm really inspired. Thank you. But I get paid to teach mathematics <laughs> uh, or I get paid to teach English. And how do I actually incorporate such things into my classroom, right? And that really just got me thinking. And this was about uh, four years ago. And that just got me thinking like, yeah, there has to be a way to introduce innovative and collaborative um modalities of teaching right uh, of learning into any classroom and fast forward three three long and painful years later rolljack was launched in uh, 2022 june 1st so let me give you some background right so let me talk to you about a, a topic that affects us all and that topic is about change so we live in a time of uh, great evolution right so we've seen a lot of evolution in education so it started in the 90s um, or even before that in the 80s, but perhaps in this part of the world in Asia, we saw that more uh, in the 1900s, right? So it was really just about basic literacy skills. With the advent of the internet, it became more about ICT or info, info communication technology liter literacy, right? Just learning, just, just learning how to operate a computer, right? Learning how to use uh, operating systems like Windows or MacBook, um, and just learning how to do your work on the on, on the computer um, with 2010 like with the 2010s rolled around we had MOOCs and other such advanced ICT skills that became readily available with platforms like YouTube uh, you know you had a lot of content really just at the tips um, of anyone's fingertips and so learning became so easy right so uh, with so much progress in the way of uh, evolution of learning so where are we actually headed so that that's really what I want to talk to you about. Like, what is the most important thing for us to teach the future generation? Right. And before I talk to you about that, let me let me let me show you these numbers that are supposedly very scary. But it's, it's just to drive home the fact that we really do live in a time of great change and we are all at the brink of being obsolete and irrelevant. Right. So we are training kids for a world that neither you or I recognize or are ready for, right? And with the advent of machine learning and artificial intelligence, we have we are seeing in the next less than 10 years, between 40 to 60% of the world's um, jobs being rendered obsolete to automation. So now with this being established, and of course, this is not me saying it, this is the this is uh, this is the World Economic Forum, you know, the Bank of England. So the biggest think tanks in the world are coming up with these figures and these estimates, right? So um, with with all this established, like where are we going? And the most important thing for us to actually inculcate in the future of uh, the world, in the in the next generation of of leaders, right, of our students, is really to inculcate how to adapt and steer changes. Right. So the purpose of 21st century has uh, evolved from learning what to learn to learning how to learn. Right. So it's really about adapting to and steering changes. So being able to adapt to changes and also lead the changes. Now, how do you how do you actually inculcate these competencies? And that's actually called the four C's of 21st century learning. Right. So it's really about learning how to learn and not learning what to learn, like I just said. And the four C's of 21st century learning, I think, for all the educators out there, it should be quite, uh, it should be quite a loosely thrown around term, right? Where we where we keep talking about creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication. Now, what does that actually mean? So we we know that that's you know the future of what it what what we need to inculcate in education and into the students of the uh, into the students of today and the leaders of tomorrow, right? So, but how do you actually inculcate that into any classroom experience. And that is really, you know, what Rolljack is trying to unlock. So what if you could use, you know, 
the same kind of modality of training that you have been using with edtech tools that you already use in your classrooms, but augmented to include the four C's of 21st century learning. So Rolljack is really trying to embody those four C's of 21st century learning. It's scalable. You know, you can reach up to as many um, students as, as you want at the same time. It's very multi-purpose. It's useful for uh, conducting quizzes, polling, icebreakers, ideations, and you can do that all in the same place, right? You don't need to switch between so many different um, tools, right? So you have one tool for quizzing, another for ideation, another for like project work, and it becomes very difficult to manage. Um, collaboration is always difficult to inculcate uh, in any teaching environment, really because uh, when you do collaboration, it's very facilitation heavy, right? And we all know this. So whenever we want to run any collaborative activity, it really depends on how many teachers there are in the room and how well you a job you can do at facilitating that activity, because um, it's very difficult to keep everyone on task, right? And uh, at the same time, peer to peer learning is really what the, you know, what's, um, what's more left, left, what re requires more attention in classrooms, right? And um, it's really about getting everyone involved. So Rolljack is really trying to include, uh, provide an inclusive environment, which makes it very easy for any educator to, uh, to, uh, to reach out to as many students as possible and get them to participate equally, while still inculcating these, com these competencies of the future of collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity, right? So, um, Essentially, like this, this is basically what I've just covered, right? So we we are able to do all these things, and at the end of it, we're even able to quantify it. So you're not just you're not just quantifying ac accuracy because, like I said, 21st century is not so much about getting the answers right as much as it is about opening up those higher order thinking skills, um, really measuring uh, engagement, right? Because classroom engagement is actually so much more important than. Um, than just you know making making sure that people are getting the answers right because uh, when you have the right learning environment and you get everyone involved, those uh, those naturally just translate into better outputs and better outcomes for students. And we are a, we are actually able to um, give you uh, gi give you give you reports and insights on not just accuracy but also engagement, right? So you can not just track like who's showing up for your online quizzes or classroom activities, but whether they're actually performing. Right. So um, Rolljack is uh, built in a way that you can use it for any um, sort of um, um, audience size and it scales with your audience. OK. And um, the reason why this is so important is because when it comes to collaborative activities, like I said, it's not very it's usually not very scalable and it's very facilitation heavy. And I know this firsthand because I've run so many design thinking corporate trainings over the last two years. Um, eight hours a day online on, on Zoom or some other telecommunication, uh, teleconferencing app. And it's it's such a pain because um, it's usually on a, in a ratio of one to 10, right? Facilitating collaborative activities or project activities is not the easiest. And we're trying to crack that problem and, and provide a solution for that while still maintaining the capability of running um, those um, close-ended quizzing and, you know, those day-to-day uh, classroom activities that you need. So a few reasons why uh, I think Rolljack belongs in every school. And I'll, I'll go through this pretty quick because I want to spend more time with actually you experiencing Rolljack. And then uh, I want to talk about some of the competencies that we're trying to unlock with Rolljack. So um, really just improving classroom engagement, getting students not to be so distracted and getting you know them to uh, really participate in activity and get engaged. Equal participation, especially in collaborative learning, um, where if you're doing synchronous collaboration, um, it's very difficult to see who is actually contributing to uh, a specific piece of work. With Rolljack, what we've done is we've used this interesting thing called um, rotational viewing, where everyone anonymously swaps their responses. So uh, each student is still required to have an input, you know, and then they sort of they, they add on or re remix each other's inputs. So that really gets everyone involved, including the quiet, shy students. Uh, like I, I think I've mentioned collaborative learning uh, enough, so that's good. Um, boosting critical thinking um, by really just not just getting students to be just focused on getting the answers right, but also focus on 
thinking about how an answer should be evaluated, right? And how, how right or how wrong is a certain response. Um, enhancing teamwork, we support teamwork right out of the box, right? And boosting teamwork and facilitating dis group discussions is something that um, Rolljack can be incorporated in regardless of how many, um, how many students or how the size of your audience. Uh, at the same time, all this in time box activities, so you ensure that everyone stays on task, right? And uh, we have this, this AI module using artificial intelligence. We are actually able to evaluate uh, the correctness of open-ended responses. And I will, I will be showing you a demo of it, really, because uh, I think uh, a, mo a, lot of, a lot of educators spend a lot of time on marking. Um, and you know, what if we could help to alleviate that stress and that, you know, that entire responsibility of excessive marking. So gauging students' understanding of a topic by, by, by auto-scoring their, um, their responses, you know, we are able to do that. And at the end of it, providing comprehensive reports, you know, so you, don't, so you, you just don't track their performance, but you also track their engagement instantly, right? And finally, sharing lesson plans, right? So um, you can save time. So like, uh, let's say Sarah Alwyn has a you know, bunch of activities prepared on Rolljack. He can actually share that either publicly or privately to uh, another member of uh, his, uh, his teaching staff or another colleague. And you, know, you can just um, duplicate that and keep running that with, uh, with your own class. So you don't need to keep repeatedly opening up the same, uh, the, the same activity. So you can share your lesson plans. And um, in fact, we even provide like a repository for that. So uh, like I've mentioned already, it's um, just embedding future ready competencies into any classroom. And the end result of it is really just higher engagement, but also it provides you uh, a, a nice different set of classroom activities to choose from. So I'm going to show you like both, you know, the both ends of it, like when it's really just about creative thinking and how do you actually incorporate those kind of competencies into asking questions that you probably already are in everyday in everyday classrooms. So with that, let's roll Jack. And let me switch screens. And let me share my roll Jack screen. And I would, I would like to invite all of you to join my session that I've prepared. And then we can all get a sense of, you know, what it what it means to roll Jack. So in a moment, I'm going live. So there's three ways to join the session, right? And I think the easiest will really just be to scan the QR code. So there you go. Let me open up the QR code. Could someone tell me in the chat that if we have uh, audio, can you hear my audio? Sorry, I'm joining. I can hear you. Um, come again. We can hear the audio. The 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 computer audio, right? The background music. Yes. Yes. We can hear okay. You. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, come on and uh, join the session. Here's the QR code again. And if you don't want to use the QR code, you can go to rolljack.me with this session code D9FDFE. I'll wait a few more seconds, maybe about 30 more seconds, just to wait for anyone else who's joining in. You can join it at any at any time, but it's best, of course, if you start with us from the beginning. Oh, 
All right, we have 14 people. Good. I think we have uh, we have 14. So let's just start with who we have. I'm gonna give uh, everyone the last just last 10 seconds to draw draw yourselves. Oh, <laughs> I see some nice drawing coming coming in. Okay, we still have more people coming in. Okay, so uh, here's what's happening. Uh, our first activity will be just a warm-up exercise, right? It's really just uh, for us to have fun. And I want to talk, then I'll talk to you about like the, you know, the outcomes of what we have just experienced. And then I will walk you through a couple of other exercises that we can use um, to really just test knowledge and get creative with how we can use role drag to um, bring that into everyday lessons, right? Okay, so um, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So last five seconds to hit submit and submit your drawings. And five of you with drawings who are still drawing. Okay, here we go. So let's begin. All right, so our first activity is really just a fun... Uh, unapologetically, you know, uh, simple but challenging exercise. So we have to create a mashup using a jacket and one of the three random objects on your screen to create something fun, cool, or innovative. So on your screen, you have three options uh, of using of objects that you can use, and you have 10 seconds to make your choice. You have to combine it with a jacket to create something fun, cool, innovative, or wacky. You got three more seconds, make your choice, or else you are randomly assigned an object. So now, uh, here's the difficult part. Now you have one and a half minutes to sketch out your ideas of how you're actually going to use the object that you chose and combining that with a jacket, okay? So how you're going to combine the jacket together with the object you chose to create something new and innovative, right? At the end of it, remember to give it a title. There's a title box at the bottom. So make sure to give a title to your beautiful invention. And you have slightly more than a minute. I will stop talking and let you focus. Last 10 seconds. Make sure to submit. All right, last three seconds. And if you do not submit, it is auto submitted for you. All right. So here's the fun part where we actually get to anonymously collaborate with someone else. Okay. So what you're seeing now is someone else's response on your screen. And you have to make it better. Right. You have to make it your own and add on to it. If you can't really understand what they were drawing, go ahead and it's open to your own interpretation. That the object you, they chose is written on top of the sketch pack uh, of, of the of the sketch box, so you can just read what they chose. Thank you. 
All right, and we are done. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. We're gonna collaborate again anonymously with with someone else. So somebody else's response on your screen one more time. Okay, and you know the drill. So you have one and a half minutes to um, remix their idea, right? So make it better. last 10 seconds and we are done so now here's the fun part so the hard work is over and now you will see uh, three random ideas on your screen submitted by other people on this uh, on this call and in this session with us so hit the tap to evaluate and you will see that you have uh, you have 1000 coins in your wallet and you can spend them on the ideas that you like the most by hitting the plus and minus button and you can go back and forth to really just look at what you have to evaluate and spend your money on the ideas that you like When you're done, remember to hit submit. All right, last 15 seconds. We're still waiting for a couple of more people to... Uh, submit their responses. All right. Okay. So now we, we're going to see the winners as decided by us, right? We're going to see who, who raised the most money, who got the most money for their idea, uh, for their ideas. And here we go. All right. So... <laughs> So here, here are our top three ideas. Now we have, in first place, we have the tap. Let me just lower this down a little bit more. All right, so we, we have the tap called the cash tap um, made by uh, Legna um, and collaborated with Alwyn and Gap. So uh, I guess this is a tap and you raised the uh, 1,100 Rolljack coins. So we call it Rolljack coins, that's our currency. Sadly, not exchangeable for any uh, any other real currency. So you raise 1,100 Rolljack coins for a cash tap. I'm guessing it's a tap that <laughs> when you open, cash comes out of it, I guess. <laughs> and in second place, we have uh, Rage with uh, Legna and Alwyn. So looks like uh, Legna and Alwyn are, are the are the winning team. Yeah. Um, also contributed to the second idea, second the second place idea of using shopping bags with a jacket. I'm not sure where the jacket is on the taps, <laughs> on, on the tap idea. And here we have an alarm clock, maybe with a made out of a jacket. I'm not so sure. And um, below, we'll, we can see all the other ideas. So here we have the magnetic tracksuit 
um, which I also collaborated with. Um, let's see what what uh, we have a sofa with a jacket. That's really that's really cool with a socket for charging. <laughs> it's a jacket you become a part of, uh, or rather a sofa you become a part of as a jacket. Very cool. So we have a lot of interesting ideas over here, and I can keep scrolling through them. But my main my main question here is I want to go back to my slides. So I want you to stay on the the role deck activities. Don't close it. We'll come back to it. But before that, I really just want to go back to my slides and talk about like what it is that we just experienced and why did we just do this, right? Um, let me just switch the audio off, right? And I really just want to talk to you about like why did we just do that and what's the what's the point of uh, you know, doing doing this as a warm-up activity, aside from the fact that it's really just a lot of fun and gets people excited uh, and engaged and hooked and really just sets the tone for the lesson. Um, aside from that, like what it what is it that we just experienced? So a lot of time when when ideation is done, it is it is assessed. So the success of a brainstorming session or an ideation session is assessed based on four things. And that is quantity, quality, novelty, and diversity. So typically what I like to do is I like to ask, um, you know, from the audience, what you think um, is the most important of all these, of, of these four things. Uh, um, once we went live, I realized I should have added that as a question on Rolljack and I could have gotten you to do a poll, but um, I, didn't, I didn't remember to do that. So. Uh, yeah, so typically these these are the four things that are asked for uh, are, are are used to assess any brainstorming session, right? So quantity, quality, novelty, and diversity. Now I want you to just take a second to think about which of these do you think is the most important, right? Which of these do you think is the most important out of all these four, right? And a lot of times people say quality, novelty, or diversity, but the actual answer is actually quantity, because when you hit quantity you actually hit the other three, right? You, If you have an, enough ideas, you have some ideas that will be of good quality. Of course, some that may not be that refined, but you will have some high quality ideas. You will have some very novel ideas and you will have some very diverse ideas, right? So quality, novelty, and diversity are a function of quantity. What that means is that once they are dependent on quantity. And once you hit quantity, you do actually hit the other three. And what we have just done, so there's about 30 of us on uh, on this call and have joined the Rolljack session. So we have about 30 ideas, which were collaborated three times or two times. So you have three versions, three versions of each idea. And we've managed to make all of that in less than 10 minutes. So that's 90 different ideas of how you can use a jacket with a random object to do something, right? So of course, in this case, the context is really just fun and wacky, but uh, I'll tell you why we made it fun and wacky. Because if I asked you to get serious, you wouldn't really put your best foot forward. Now, the, the only way to have good ideas is by having many ideas. And that's really what the point is that I'm trying to get drive, drive home, right? And we got each of us to contribute and each of us to collaborate, right? So it's really about opening up those channels of communication, getting everyone to contribute to such discussions, sharing their thoughts, sharing their suggestions, right? And the second one is collaboration and iteration, right? So collaboration and, and iteration is such an important part of uh, coming up with better solutions, right? Uh, a lot of what we do in the modern world is not is not trying to solve the problems that have already been solved, we are trying to go beyond the scope of human knowledge, right? And when you go beyond the scope of human knowledge, of course, that's called innovation. But when you're doing innovation, it is so important to learn how to do collaboration and iteration because no new innovation gets it 100% right on their first try, right? You have to keep iterating to get something better. And even the biggest companies in the world, even like your iPhone has you know, being iterated 14 times, right? So it started with the iPhone. Now we are we are getting like the iPhone 14 that's launching very soon. So iteration is uh, is an endless thing, right? And um, really understanding that and using that and and plugging that into any lesson experience is really what future ready skills and learning is all about. And and uh, another one I want to talk about is divergence and convergence, right? Any good discussion 
in a classroom or in any other setting, even in, within a teacher meeting, as a good component of divergence and a really good component of convergence, right? So divergence means you have to really explore the different opportunities, the different ideas, the different suggestions, understand what everyone's thoughts are, collect that quantity of ideas and suggestions, and then be able to converge them down to finding the most promising ones, right? So down selection or convergence is a very big component of facilitating a good and effective discussion in any setting, let alone classrooms, right? So divergence and convergence. And what we have just experienced is we diverged. We got all 27 or 30 of us to contribute ideas. We iterated on it. We collaborated. We iterated. And then we converged to um, find you know, the most promising or most popular ideas. That's how we got the first, second, and third place, and so on and so forth, right? So um, incorporating divergence and convergence into any discussion is so important. And, and with Rolljack, we are able to do the, both of these components in a very um, condensed time. And this, is, this brings me back to something I mentioned, which is about play, right? Uh, the reason why we used, uh, why I used like such a fun, wacky activity is really because if I asked you, hey, um, let's, let's come up with these ideas and this time I'm going to grade you and this is going to be your performance review, right? And that, that makes you so stressed. You're like, okay, I really have to do well on this. And when you, when you get stressed out, you're not bold. But when you play, you're bold. When you're bold, you put your best foot forward. When you put your best foot forward, um, magic happens, <laughs> right? So a lot of a lot of great things happen when you introduce that um, that idea or that environment of play, right? And when you can retain that 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 environment or just that mindset of play in any classroom, you can really enhance uh, learning engagement, right? So um, I guess. The last thing I want to talk about is let's play, right? So um, with this, now I want to transition back to Rolljack and talk to you about how we can use Rolljack, um, not just for like, you know, such uh, creative icebreakers, but how do you use these components in any classroom? So I just want to stop screen share for a bit and look at everyone, right? So I've done something cool. I have created... Uh, maybe about six or seven activities on Rolljack, but I don't have any multiple choice question. Now that is, I've done that on purpose because uh, here's the thing, right? Um, multiple choice questioning is is the bread and butter of every teacher, right? And all of us use it in classrooms, and we are so infatuated by it, right? And even even on Rolljack, I think multiple choice questioning is still the most important compo uh, most important activity type or most popular activity type um, as, as per like how much it's used. So as per usage, our MCQs are always used more than all the other components. But uh, the, the entire vision with Rolljack is trying to promote, uh, um, promote open-ended discussion, promote open-ended type of questioning and going really going beyond uh, MCQ, right? So yes, uh, Sir Alvin, let's play a new way to look uh, into the idea and environment of play in the classroom. So really, let's play. Um, so again, I've I've uh, chosen to leave out any multiple choice question, and I want to showcase, you know, how we can use these uh, activity types um, for for regular classrooms, right? So going back to Rolljack. So now let's look at the leaderboard. All right, so we have Legna, Rich, and Maya in uh, first, second, and third place. So uh, this one is a poll, right, a, a quick poll. So pick your favorite fruit. This is, we are back on, we are back on uh, the same Rolljack session. Um, some of you may need to hit refresh. If you, uh, if you closed your tab, you need to come back out and hit refresh. Because I need to do that also. Some interesting uh, classroom management um, facilities is like, firstly, you can pause. So you can actually pause the session to give more instructions, right? Um, 
uh, you can even add time to activities. So over here, if I if I sense that you know people need more time, I can do that. Um, I can even skip the entire activity, but I will not do that. I'll probably skip some of the the other ones in front of uh, that are coming up. So this is a quick poll, um, really just to show you, you know, the the polling capabilities. I wanted to start quick. Uh, I wanted to have a quick and easy one to start off with, right? Before we get more, uh, we dive deeper into like the the other sort of activities that we can run. Okay, it seems like uh, Mango is the most popular. Okay. All right, so let's go next. So this one is a sketch activity, and this is using um, a sketch to really assess whether you know um, there's a whether students comprehend um, you know the the instructions. In this case, is just a, a simple shape recognition. So draw a blue triangle and five yellow stars. So of course this is more elementary where you're testing colors and um, colors and shapes. So since we still have 45 seconds left and if I sense in the, uh, you know, in, in the environment or as if I sense in the class that most people are done, uh, I can just go ahead and instantly end the activity. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So I'm ending the phase. So this is actually uh, a collaboration and here we can actually collaborate with each other and add on or change anything if you spot something that is incorrect. But I, I believe that our <laughs> our educators here should, should be doing perfectly fine with just a simple question like this. But what I'm, I guess what, what I'm trying to show is that you can actually use this to get students to help each other out if um you know if one of them is unsure and and in our gallery so uh, i can show you that in in a bit in our gallery we can actually see the evolution of each response and you can see which student added what you know to each response so you can actually sense that okay so student the initial response was incorrect but someone helped them out along the way to get the right answer right and uh that allows you to really um identify which you know which student needs more help or what which student um has what particular strengths and weaknesses and it's really opening up more peer-to-peer -peer learning so i'm going to go ahead and end this as well i think everyone is done so now we're going to uh evaluate as well so this is uh, so of course you can you can choose to switch these things on and off um in this case i just wanted to uh, for you guys to just have some fun with this right uh, and really just evaluate uh, how nice these drawings are. <laughs> so who has the best drawings for, uh, you know, a simple, a simple shape question? It's definitely not me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this activity. Okay. So of course, like I was saying before, you can actually choose to switch it on and off. Like you could just do a simple response activity if you don't want to have the collaborating, collaborative component. <laughs> uh, 
So, <laughs> uh, Maya's drawing is more abstract, I guess. Yeah, but uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, some teachers are having fun with it. Okay, and this one actually has the angles drawn out as well. This is a, a nice um, split up into a right angle. Very nice. Very cool. Okay, so uh, let's keep moving in the interest of time. I have a few more activities I want to show you. So Legna and Maya are still uh, doing well, going strong. So this is our uh, auto scoring quiz, right? And how this works is the educator, so you the educator fills in the correct answer. And uh, these are really good uh, for uh, structured questions, you know, in questions which you require to um, look for keywords, right? And you type in the correct answer, including all your keywords that you're looking for. And we have an AI component that runs in the back um, once all the students have submitted their responses, we uh, evaluate the correctness of each response um, to how to how close it is to yours, right? And give a score based on that. Okay, last 10 seconds, last five seconds. Okay, um, so just a disclosure, I do remember what I wrote. So <laughs> I did I did type in like something fairly close to what my original, like what my correct response had been. And uh, how this works is it takes a mix of the keywords and the intention of, um, of the response. But this, of course, only works in English at the moment. So it is a mix of um, semantic and lexical correctness. So here you go. So I wrote this. The, the, the correct answer I wrote was nutritional content gets assimilated through the walls of the intestine through the microvilli. And of course, uh, I remembered what I wrote. So I wrote nutritional content from food is assimilated into the bloodstream. Um, I, I made some spelling errors here. Uh, through, I meant to write through the walls of the intestine via the microvilli. Digested food from the stomach enters the small intestine when nutrients are absorbed in the body. There you go. So, like the overall, the overall, the overall intent of Gab has been the same as mine, which is why you know he's been graded pretty well. And uh, Rach says the muscles of the small intestine mix the food with digestive juices and push further walls intestine. Yeah, there you go. As long as you get that absorption bit. You know, um, you you're on the right path. So um, that's that's how the marking the marking tool works, right? And below we have some other ones, and, and uh, many uh, wrote it <laughs> digestive juice. <laughs> um, yep, yep, yep. I guess I guess not not very interested in biology. Some people. All right. So uh, we still have Legna, Maya, and Manny in in uh, in first, second, and third place. That's great. Uh, even after getting the answer right, I'm I'm like nowhere near. So <laughs> I'm still like in seventh or eighth place. Okay, so let's keep going. So I have included a couple of sketch questions. Now this one is a math question, a very simple one. Draw y equals to x graph, right? And how would that look? So is, as you can notice uh, on your screen, you have a background that you're drawing on. And I've uploaded the Cartesian plane as a background so that you can actually do that on Rolljack where you can upload your own background and get students to sketch over it. And in the next couple of questions, I'm actually going to be showing you some examples of how to do that. So this one is a math one. And in the next few ones, you'll see some science one as well. Right. So go ahead and just draw what you can. So draw the y equals to x graph. 
And I'm giving you a few more seconds to do it before I end the activity. No cheating, please don't Google it. I'm sure you can remember this. <laughs> Okay, and let's add the activity and let's see how everyone did. Right, I believe I, yeah, there you go. So um, what we are seeing here is uh, everyone's responses because these this is not graded, right? So it's not graded. Um, so I didn't include any um, peer evaluation but you can actually include peer evaluation and ask uh, students to rate the accuracy of um, of their peers' response, right? So there you go. You can see all the all all the responses uh, coming in. And let's go next. Right. So um, what we are also seeing, and I think Legna has dropped, <laughs> has dropped because uh, we are actually able to uh, detect whether there is any response from people or not. And um, we are able to track engagement of students. And I will show you that just in a bit. So this next one is about uh, sketching the clock and what it looks like half past three o'clock. All right, I think uh, that's enough time for everyone to respond. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the activity as well, just so that we can have more time to discuss. Or else I'm, I'm just going to be, <laughs> you're just going to be hear, hearing me talk. And that's not fun. <laughs> All right, so... Um, I really love the fact that there's some people really just having so much fun with these activities, you know, drawing faces on the clock. <laughs> there you go. So uh, a very simple way to, uh, you know, test students' knowledge on like various topics, right? So this is just like uh, also more for an elementary school. All right. And I think this is our last one. Yeah, so with this, um, I've uploaded uh, the electron shell and I've asked you to draw the shell configuration of the sodium atom, right? So if you're a chemistry teacher, you should be, <laughs> this should be fun for you, right? And if you're not, I'm sorry, <laughs> don't hate me, right? So I was just trying to showcase the different kinds of ways you can use the sketch-based activities and incorporate that into, you know, whatever subject it is that you're teaching because I get this question a lot, um, you know, the sketch, the sketches are cool, but how do I actually, you know, use it to ask more specific questions to my subject matter? All right, let's go ahead and end the phase. Okay, I'll, I'll give some time. I'll give some time. So let's let's just let the time run out. Last 10 seconds, so please make sure you submit. And here we have everyone's responses again. Right, so 
yeah that's actually really good gab <laughs> gab got it got it pretty accurate um mine is uh, super messy <laughs> Yeah, very cool. So, uh, as you can see, you can use this for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the things that you may already be teaching. And uh, <laughs> congrats, Gab, congrats, Gab, uh, and Alan and Rach in second and third place, respectively. Yeah. So let me just show you a couple of more things. Let's go on to the gallery. I will need to open that again. Just want to be mindful of time. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in the gallery, you can actually see what I was sh showing you earlier was how you can actually click into any response. And you can see that this is uh, Sir Jeff's original response. And you can see um, how it has actually been uh, ev um, collaborated by other people. So that particular one didn't have any collaboration. So let's uh, look at this one. This one does. So this is uh, Gab's uh, Gab's original response, and um, this was the collaboration by me. I don't really see what I changed, but essentially you can see that, and you can see who evaluated what for it, right? And we go back to the gallery, and here in the reports page, you can actually see the overall engagement and the overall accuracy of your session. So <laughs> sadly, our uh, our session has not been very accurate, but fairly engaging, right? So we have a 50% engagement score. You can also see who's the most and least engaged and who needs help, right? And um, in the activity level, we for for all the activities, we, we do show the engagement and the participation rate of the activities. And if there is, in fact, any evaluation component, be it peer evaluation or be it um, evaluation by uh, you know, by role jack based on like MCQs or auto scoring, uh, you can see that accuracy score as well. Um, so we we have the engagement and the participation rate and the accuracy scores. And in the participant level report, I think you you know most of the educators must be quite familiar with this, where you can see all uh, of the students' um, activities and see their overall scores, right? So see their scores and see their accuracy and even export all of this as a PDF or even an Excel sheet. And that's sent to you by email. Um, what I actually wanted to show, the last thing I actually wanted to show, because I realized um, I left that out from the activities, is um, the fact that we have different ways of doing peer evaluation, right? So what you experienced was just one of it, which is the invest, right? So in our open-ended, you can also have uh, the same thing. So the way our activities are structured is from the response phase where you respond and then you can choose to switch on collaboration or not, right? And then you can also choose to switch on evaluation or not, right? So in the peer evaluation mode, we uh, have three ways of doing that. And what you did was the invest. You experienced the invest where you're given digital currency. It's a more lighthearted way of just getting people to... Um, uh, you know, engage in doing peer evaluation. So in the scales, it's more, uh, it, it's, it's, I guess it's a bit, a bit more cut and dry because um, you choose the kind of metrics that you want to evaluate and um, those show up sort of here, right? And you can also choose whether it's a, you know, 100 point scale or a 10 point scale, and you can even create your own metrics for it. So you can have your own rubrics for assessment and you can get you know students to um, participate in that by evaluating their own peers' responses. And finally, in the tags, so the tagging can be used for filtering or categorization. So it could be something like agree or disagree. So if you get you know the the entire class to draw a math graph, you could have um, the agree disagree, right? If you're doing some um, some trivia, it could be true, false, or maybe, right? Uh, or if it's something more along the lines of ideation it could be something like desirable feasible viable like is this something that people would want can you actually build it or can you sell it um those kind of things so there are many different ways to do uh, peer evaluation on rojack and um i guess today i really just wanted to showcase like how you can go beyond um multiple choice questioning um with 
with roll drag, right? So let me just get back out here. And the last thing I guess I want to showcase is our newly launched uh, templates, which is actually in beta phase. So the templates is uh, really where you can um, submit your own ways, uh, your own activities that you've been running with Rolljack and share it with the world so that they can get more ideas of how to run, um, you know, better creative and um, new fun, novel ways of engaging students using Rolljack. So uh, I highly encourage you to get become a part of our community and start contributing your own templates, you know, to, to the public so that, you know, people can start being inspired by your own uh, classroom pedagogy and activities and um, start using that to really introduce this way of engaging students in classrooms, not just in the Philippines, but around the world, right? And with that, I, I conclude you know, my entire presentation. I really appreciate everyone's um, participation in the activities, I, and, I, and I hope you found it engaging. And I'm throwing it back to Sir Alwyn. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sir Abby, for your very wonderful and uh, amazing presentation. So, Diba teachers, so some of the things that I have gained from this is the importance of gaining ideas, the quantity of ideas, the number of ideas that we can get from our students or from our participants. This will really lead to innovation. So the more ideas that we can get, the more innovation exactly. that we will be have. Do yeah. you agree and, with and me, Sir Adi? Sir Adi, come again. Do you agree? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I was what I was saying is that um, you're so right. But it's it. I guess the main thing that we're trying to introduce with Rolljack is that it doesn't have to happen in silo, right? Like those things about introducing innovative ways of thinking and you know uh, just innovation thinking. Uh, or design thinking or any of those future you know modalities don't need to happen separately from your regular class right you can introduce those fundamentals in any classroom yes uh, so your so pictures we have seen how the different possibilities yung pwedeng ibigay po ng role jack sa atin so sa ating mga teachers uh, our teachers who are uh, in the chat box so let us give uh, our Warm thank you to Mr. Aditya Batura for uh, showing us and giving us an experience of how to use Rolljack and the possibilities that it could give in our classroom and the amazing engagement. So, sino po sa inyo dito ang nakarami ng sushi slices? So, maybe let us use our, let us thank uh, Sir Adi. So, we have here a lot of uh, teachers who are giving their uh, thank you to you, Sir uh, Sir Adi. Thank you. No, I, I I thank you for joining us and taking time off on a on a Saturday to actually do this with us. So it's really a fun afternoon. That I, it seems that the teachers really also enjoyed your different the different activities that you have prepared for us. Uh, I personally, even if when it is about science, my <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was quite challenging, wasn't it? <laughs> You're like, yeah. what is this? I haven't seen this in so many years. <laughs> but I can see how it could be used in different uh, in the different classes, and maybe much more than that. We will see later during our panel discussion how Rolljack is being used by different teachers in their different classrooms and different classes as well exactly and in fact i want to i want to you know say that to everyone who is here on the call with us that it's really all about you right it's all about each and every one of you and contributing to the you know to the collective intelligence of how to use Rolljack better and more creatively so since the platform is all about advocating you know creativity and innovation and 21st century skills that's that's also required from the teachers right <laughs> uh, get creative with the ways you are using Rolljack to deliver you know um, content and activities in classrooms and share that with the world so that you know everyone can learn from you so that we can learn from you i want to learn 
um, you know, how, how teachers have, uh, you know, found a way to incorporate role check into their classrooms. Yes, uh, I believe uh, there's also a very powerful way of giving feedback in, in with role check. So teachers will really not only learning from it or experiencing role check, but they can also really contribute to the growth of this technology for our students and for the classroom. So once again, teachers, let us give a round of applause to our uh, speaker, uh, Roll Jack's very own CEO and co-founder, Mr. Aditya Batura. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Sir Adi. And for this, uh, allow me to present to you this certificate of appreciation. Oh, that's so kind. So, sir, allow me to read it, uh, Sir Aditya. So, this certificate of appreciation is respectfully awarded to Aditya Batura for sharing his knowledge and expertise in the recently concluded webinar entitled Introduction to Role Jack and Panel Discussion with Filipinas Team, awarded on September 10, 2022. Signed by Mr. Franco Nicolo P. Adun, the administrator of Kaagapai Teacher Support. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Sir thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So, uh, Sir Adi, before I uh, let you go, uh, maybe can we have your final message to the Philippine community? Yes. Um, so this, I don't know. You, I don't even know where to start. So I just want to. Firstly, I want to say that. Um, the, the Rojak Filipinas uh, and in the broader sense, the uh, ed tech community of uh, the Philippines is just phenomenal. And um, you guys are very inspirational to me and the rest of our team, um, really because we value, um, you know, your feedback and thoughts so much. And it really shapes on a day to day basis where we take the product. Um, that's the first thing I want to say. So I'm really thankful for all the support from the community, from um, from Sir Alwyn, from uh, Sir Sir Jeffrey, and uh, you know a lot of others, right? So uh, from from just the entire community in general. That's the first thing I want to say. And um, the second thing I want to say is, um, I hope this has uh, really expanded your horizon and given you a different way of thinking about how. You can introduce uh, different ways of engaging, um, you know, audiences, not just in classrooms, right, but uh, even thinking beyond classrooms and how you can bring these kind of open ended activities into uh, any uh, engagement, um, especially classrooms, of course, and uh, using that to not just not just looking at it as a way to uh, not just looking at it as something separate from what you are uh, already doing from your current lesson plans, but augmenting, so accelerating learning and engagement and augmenting learning um, using something different, right? So bringing in more collaborative iteration, divergence, convergence, right? And bringing in just the peer-to-peer -peer interaction into any classroom to enhance learning outcomes. And uh, I, hope, I hope you uh, bring that uh, you know, with you going forward. And finally, I also hope that you share that with the world so that, you know, we can keep continuing to learn from you and being inspired by you to to really learn about, you know, where we are going to take Rolljack next. So, thank okay. you. So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Aditya Batura. And I hope that this will not be the last time that you will be gracing uh, the Philippines, uh, definitely where not. we have definitely our not. invitation. So once again, thank you very much, sir. Our appreciation from the Agape Teacher Support and Roll Jack Filipinas. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, this has been really fun. I hope to do this again very soon. Okay, sir. So, ayun, so we part, uh, sir, Adi already. So teachers, hindi pa po tayo tapos. So yun pa lang po yung... Uh, ating isa sa mga unang uh, bagay na makakasama, uh, umpisa pa lamang po yung ating uh, pagkakataon na yon. Sa susunod, ang ating namang makakausap sa ating panel discussion kung paano po nila ginagamit ang role jack sa kanilang mga classroom, ang ex kanilang experience sa paggamit ng role jack sa iba't ibang uh, bagay, hindi lamang sa pagtuturo, 
kundi pati na rin sa ating uh, ang role jack sa kanilang training sa ibang mga teachers at kanilang mga innovation sa paggamit ng role jack lalo na sa ating sitwasyon ngayon. So teachers, ipapakilala ko po sa inyo ang aking mga kasamahan sa role jack Pilipinas at eto ang mga kauna-unahang Pilipinas uh, role jack Pilipinas champions. Uh, umpisahan po natin kay uh, Mr. Mark Bagsik. He is a teacher yes. from Apelo Cruz Elementary School. Sir Mark? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Sir Franco. Good afternoon, sir. Ang susunod po natin makakasama ay ang aking kaduo na nakilala na po natin dito sa uh, ating mga iba't ibang activities with uh, KTS, uh, si Sir Gab from Gimbalaon Elementary School. Ayan, good afternoon, Carol Jacks. Yan. <laughs> good afternoon, Sir Bodge, uh, Sir Mark, good afternoon. Sir Franco, good afternoon. And to you, mga minamahal naming mga guro. Good afternoon po. So thank you. Uh, Kaduwa ang susunod po natin is all the way from the United States of America. Ang susunod po natin mga kasama. Uh, she's a math and robotics teacher from Bernalillo High School from New Mexico. Si Ma'am Jenny Lou Riel. Hi, Ma'am Jenny. Hello. Good morning, good night, kahit anong time zone pa kayo. Hello po, Ma'am Carol Jack. Hi, Ma'am Jenny. Anong oras na po dyan sa inyo ngayon? It's 1.31 a.m. Wow. So, yan po ang mga sakripisyo ng ating mga Carol Jack para may paabot sa atin ang panel discussion na ito. Ang susunod po na ating tatawagin ay ang aking co-teacher mula sa Xavier School, ang pinakabata sa aming group, si Mr. Cleve Limanin. Good afternoon, Sir Poch. Good afternoon, uh, co-panelists and Sir Franco. Thank you for having us. So yes, uh, meron pa po tayong isang makakasama. Ang isa din sa dati na lagi nating nakakasama at lagi-lagi nating uh, nakakadaumpalad din dito sa Kaagapay Teacher Support from National Teachers College, si Coach Jeffrey Beltran. Hey, hello, hello. Magandang araw sa inyo. Ano mang oras ay napapanood. Hello sa inyo, teachers. And it's nice to be back dito sa Kaagapay Teacher Support. Hello. So hello, hello, hello mga teachers. So ito po, sa atin lang uumpisahan ang ating mainit na balitaktakan tungkol sa paggamit ng role jack sa ating mga classroom. So mga sa mga teachers din po o kasama natin dito sa uh, sa chat, kung meron po kayong mga katanungan tungkol sa role jack, please gamitin po natin or ilagay po natin ang mga tanong sa chat box. At umpisahan po natin sa isa sa mga uh, siguro isa sa mga dat- tatanungin na ng ating mga kasamahan. Ang dami na nating nakikitang mga apps ngayon sa iba't ibang mga activities natin. So with all the established, marami na tayong napag-usapan dito din sa KTS, marami na tayong naibigay. Bakit nyo or why did you choose Rolja? And what makes it a stand out from the rest? So siguro umpisahan natin kay Kaduo, tapos si Sir uh, Mark, then Cleve, then si Ma'am Jenny, and then Sir uh, Jeffrey. Ayan. Uh, for me naman, um... Bakit ba Roll Jack? Siguro at first yung kanyang novelty. Kasi yung una ko nakita sa kanya, um, yung Roll Jack at first, hindi siya para sa classroom instruction. For me lang nga, yung experience. Um, hindi siya for classroom instruction. It's really for design thinking. It's really for um, strategic planning, parang ganun. It's more on the corporate, um, anong tawag dito, corporate development ng mga, ng mga personnel. So, um, since I'm also um, giving workshops, micro-workshops on bridging leadership as well on design thinking to young leaders, no, yung mga student leaders, why not, sabi ko, why not gamitin ko to just to, you know, just to familiarize with its with the basics, with the fundamentals of role jack. At nagustuhan ko din naman siya. Nagustuhan ko siya in a way na nagkaroon siya ng parang collaborative part doon na feature and at the same time, um, yun nga, nagkaroon ng peer evaluation na feature. So, at the latter part, doon ko na din na-realize, oy, why not? I, 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 I have this, I'll have this with my 
um, education students kasi I'm also teaching uh, future educators in the making. So, yun nga, no? parang ginawa ko lang siya ng simple five item assessment, multiple choice na, na, na test and the kids love it. Um, my students love it in a way na yung unang na in love sila doon sa sushi slice. <laughs> sushi slices talaga yung parang nakuha parang nakuha yung kanilang loob and at the same time yung seamless na um, seamless flow nung 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 application tsaka hindi siya ano hindi siya parang mabigat for the phones ng mga ng mga students during that time kasi parang online talaga yung class um, during those times so yun and uh, that's how i really discovered rolljack and that's how i really applied rolljack for the first time ayan thank you sir bodge Thank you, Kaduwa. So next, uh, Sir Mark. Sir Mark. Uh, ako naman, paano mga kapatid is uh, una-una sa pagpili ng isang app is uh, lalo ako po ay isang elementary teacher. Isang una kong tinitig na is yung element of fun. Kasi alam nyo po sa mga batang elementary is uh, they tend to get bored easily. So uh, that's one factor. Kung mag-e-enjoy ba yung aking while learning. And also, uh, yung uh, easy way of having them engaged to meaningful engagement, especially with the use of, uh, is kasi itong role jack sa uh, meron pa yung tinatawag na feature which is digital inking na nakakapag-annotate sila sa mismo activity and doon sa mga mismong uh, Uh, as para siyang assessment din uh, sa huli ng ating mga lessons. And sa pangalawa naman, is, uh, uh, sa mga teachers, madali siyang i-share and madali siyang uh, ma-access. Paano ko siya nasabi? Kasi we can accumulate points para makakuha ng, uh, ng parang premium access within the app. So marami within the public school teachers kasi uh, especially when I do trainings with them, ang unang tanong nila sa akin, Sir, Di ba rin po ba? Yes. <laughs> so, ito rin yung isa sa mga pinapaliwanan na ito sa kanilas. You can get easy access within the app by actively uh, engaging with your students, creating uh, materi- resources and materials from the app, from uh, sa ating Rojak app. And that way, makakakuha tayo ng mas matagal na access within the Rojak. So, sa katlo, is, uh, yung kinasider ko is, How can I deliver 21st century education? And pretty much with Rolljack is para na siyang buong package na yung sis of 21st century education is talaga namang maihahatid natin doon sa ating mga partners. Especially yung tinatawag natin na collaboration within the classroom. So yun po. Maraming salamat. Uh... Cap Mike, susunod po nating tatawagin para mag-share ng kanyang idea is uh, Ma'am Jenny Lu. Ayun, so I I like Roll Jack kasi hindi lang siya pang-content eh. Um, mostly I use it for SEL. Uh, it's a way for me to document the the emotions that not normally we see on a daily basis. And then it becomes visual because nasanay tayo puro type, puro sulat. But then it becomes more um, lively. The engagement becomes more lively. There's data management. There's a lot of reflective thinking in the use of the, of the different platforms na, na options na nandun sa platform natin. And it's collaborative yet individualized. Hindi siya, makikita mo talaga yung how you can assess data and how can you reflect on your teaching through the Rolljack platform. And kahit anong subject pwede. So you can really look into the, the curriculum and think of a lot of ways to use Rolljack into instructions. So dumako naman po tayo ngayon sa ating pinakabagong teacher sa ating grupo. Uh, so, based from your experience, naman, please, uh, please answer the question. Okay, so among all the emerging apps, why did I choose Rojack and what makes it stand out from the rest? I think in general, uh, 
it would be the engagement with the students, I think, in this new age of online learning and, you know, dealing with the pandemic. I think it's really, uh, it's really a challenge to have engagement with the students to make sure that everyone would be part participating with our activities. And just with Rolljack, you could hook them immediately with, you know, the basic things that Rolljack has to offer from the sushi to the sketching. I think that is a good engagement to begin with. Also, I'd really like to emphasize the use of uh, students' input. I think the pooling of students' input to make something creative and collaborative is just a plus point for me that World Jack has to offer. And there are different ways where we could uh, explore it. And I think that's it, so much. Thank you very much, Sir Cleve. And yes, uh, Coach Jack. <clears throat> Ayun, hi. Um, let's get straight to the point. Una, maraming tools ang pwede natin gamitin. Ano? And it's up to us teachers which one will be very useful for our instruction. Uh, that's very clear to us. And similar to um, Sir Gab, in my case, I also teach future teachers and professionals who like to teach. No? And in, in my own classes, I tell them na Maraming tools na available. There are tools that are there just for you to explore and utilize. But again, it's up to you which one you'll be using. No? And in my case, since I'm teaching now in a hybrid setup, um, beginning you know, in a few days from now, um, I look for that particular tool that at least would um, keep them engaged Mm -mm. Very important ang engagement. Uh, in fact, one of the challenges, if I'm going to answer that question later, one of that would be engagement, right? And noon pa man, until now, engagement is a concern aside from the internet connection. And these tools, most of them require connections. And as experienced earlier, um, talk about design thinking. Talk about ownership of learning, another important thing. Feedback. Collaboration, those skills are present in Rolljack, making it um, one of the tools um, that can be best of choice when it comes to those uh, skills na kailangan mong uh, develop whether sa students mo or young ones or uh, let's say in higher education also. So making it flexible and novel at the same time. Yun. So thank you very much, uh, teachers. So nakita naman po natin kung ano yung dahilan kung bakit sila, bakit yung ating mga co-teachers na kasama ngayon sa panel ay pinili ang role jack at ime-explore din ang role jack para mas uh, maintindihan din natin ang gamit ng role jack dito sa uh, sa educational landscape natin ngayon. So sa akin naman, sa aking experience, ako palagi kong ginagamit ang role jack sa Mac. Uh, Lalo na yung sa mga students ko minsan, yun yung parang sabi ni Sir Jeff kanina, yung sa engagement kasi medyo may problema tayo or since yung sa amin sa school, naka high flex yung setup namin, uh, concurrent, na minsan gusto ko makita din yung sagot ng aking mga estudyante na medyo na, kapag wala sila sa akin, parang nangyayari, parang isa-isa lang ang makikita kong sagot nila. But with Rolja at yung gamit ng sketch it out feature nito, nagkakaroon ako ng pagkakataon na makita yung mga sagot ng aking mga sudyante at kung yung solution nila kung tama ba yung way ng pag-present nila ng solution para makapunta sa final answer. So, yun yung sa akin, yun yung isang magandang naging experience ko sa Rolja. Pero eto naman, ibabato ko yung susunod na tanong kay Sir Mark. Ah, uh, Sir Mark, sa iyo naman, based sa yung experience, how do you maximize the use of Rolljack in your school and in your subject area? Sa school namin, sir, is a uh, ginagamit namin and mina maximize namin yung Rolljack ano when it comes to synchronous sessions in creating engagement nga no sa ating mga students. Lalo sabi nga ni nila sir kanina no na uh, talagang it's really a challenge on how to engage your students. Kasi lalo kapag online, ano, mamaya, makikita mo na lang, your student left the, 
Google Meet link. So it's really hard na i-retain sila doon. And uh, ang napansin ko through through this uh, app ano, wherein they they are having fun lalo doon sa sushi slices ano. Ay hindi hindi sila yung kapag tinawag mo ay bigla na lang mag-believe doon sa Google Meet link. Ah, uh, ito is magse-stay sila doon sa class mo dahil nag-e-enjoy sila. And uh doon naman pagdating ano, hindi lang siya sa klase namin ginagamit. Uh, and uh just this uh April is ginamit namin siya sa aming lock session ano. And syempre hindi rin lang naman ang mga bata ang nabuboring pagdating sa mga ganyang engagement. Pati rin yung ating mga teacher. So, yung aking mga kasamahang teacher sa Apelo Cruz Elementary School ay talaga namang nag-enjoy at para silang uh, nagbalik sa pagkabata doon sa aming ginawang uh, iba't ibang engagement pagdating doon sa uh, ating paggamit ng Rojak application. And uh, sa SDO Pasay naman, uh, nakasama ko dito si Sir Alwin when we launch uh, Rojak sa buong SDO Pasay through the initiative of our Uh, education program supervisor si Dr. Ramil Dorol and dito po siya ngayon hello sir and uh, nakita naman natin yung mga output nila especially doon ng mga pinagdrawing na sila is talaga namang mga kakaiba yung mga naibibigay nilang idea so mas maraming na produce through collaboration and mas maraming uh, naibibigay na inputs uh, ang ating mga educators din ano kapag ginagamit natin itong ating Rojack application so yun po sir Alvin So, maraming maraming salamat, uh, Sir Mark. So, nakita po natin yung sample ng paano gamitin ang ating role jack, hindi lang sa classroom, kundi pati sa pag-train ng ating mga teachers para ma-ano natin yung boredom na sinatawag din natin. Yung susunod naman na pupuntahan natin is, nakita natin meron tayo dito uh, isang teacher, si uh, Sir Gab, na nagtuturo ng grade school at nasa university. And then, meron din tayong teacher na nasa ibang bansa. So siguro ang uh, ang tanong ko lang nasusunod uh, yung sa alignment na, sa ating MELT or sa alignment sa standards ng ating mga schools o sa US siguro ginagamit district. So paano natin masisiguro na yung mga ginagawa natin or withdrawal ja yung activities natin are aligned with the standards of our school or the standards of our district. Uh, siguro unahin natin si Ma'am Jenny Lu, tapos uh, si Kaduwaga. Ayan. So, on my experience, and I, I try to make sure that we use, Gold Jack is so much fun, but having fun is different from learning through having fun. So, hindi pwedeng magpaparol jack ka kasi may sushi siya. Dapat magpaparol jack ka. And sushi is just buying time for those who are taking it forever to put their answers in. And para yung iba, hindi sila mabobor sa pag -iintay. Kasi if it was a, a board activity inside the classroom, then yung iba tulala na iba, parang kinakausap na yung phone nila mentally, no? Parang hawakan mo ang cellphone at mag-cellphone ka na lang dahil ang tagal sumagot ng iba. So the the... The competencies, the role jack gives uh, an avenue for you to to make your lesson plan lively. And the platform itself guides you to the you do, I do, we do, whatever, whatever sequence you want to put it together. And at the same time, you can visualize on one full screen, nasusundan ba yung sinasabi mo? Do you have to interject? Do you have to masyado bang madali para sa kanila. So, it's not the content plus the how rigid or how how uh, in-depth can you push your lessons more. Kasi meron naman siyang mga impromptu na, na pwede mo siyang isingit. So, yun yung uh, ang you don't use the platform just to make sure na the kids are actively engaging. But Are they actively engaged in the content? And you can see it through the outputs. And sabi nga ni, sa amin ni, ni Sir Alvin, mabisa talaga yan kasi math. You can visualize talaga. If you say plot the points, you, you're going to see who can plot the points and who cannot. 
And you can see who does not even try kasi visual nga siya. So doon pa lang, makikita mo na yung, yung uh, formative assessment doon sa iyong uh, content. So hopefully, doon sa mga magtatry ngayon, alam ko hindi na naman kayo matutulog. Bawal matulog ang teacher kasi parang ako lang yan. Bawal umagat gabi na. Malapit na tayo mag 24 hours, mga kapatid. Sana yung 12 to 24 hours din, ano? Pero you, you should have um, a quick uh, uh, analysis then. How long do you use it to make sure that your kids can follow through the standards? But it doesn't mean that you have to use it every day. There's a certain lesson, a certain topic that matches role jack specifically. You don't have to use role jack every day. It has to match the requirements, skill-based and performance-based, content-wise. Thank you. Napakaganda nung last part ng sinabi ni Ma'am. Hindi mo kailangan talaga gamitin ang role jack, lalo na kung uh, pag hindi yun yung hindi mamamatch yung skill or objective natin for that specific day. It's not because there's an app na available. Gamit tayo ng gamit kung hindi pa naman pala mamamit yung dapat nating masagutan or for our, the skills that are required by the lesson for that day. So ipasa ko naman ang bola ngayon sa pagsagot ng ating tanong. Uh, Kaduo? Ayan, thank you, Sir Boj. No, this time on the uh, on the public school perspective, naman, I would like to invite the teachers to see this like um, in a macro uh, macro lens, no. Um, siguro yung ko yung strategies on how we could align the curriculum with technology in learning. Unang una siguro mabilis lang is to kailangan maklose yung gap between the curriculum department and yung IT department and which DepEd has done so naman for the past two years during the pandemic. Nakita natin how our department work very hard to really equip us, to really provide the necessary um, the necessary support sa lahat ng mga kaguruan. Um, pangalawa, siguro yung technology professional development. Uh, nagagawa din naman natin ito ngayon. No? Through our LAC sessions, through our um, in-service training, ginagawa yan ni na Sir Mark <laughs> sa kanilang school. I have seen many, many posts of public schools doing such. No? Pangatlong, pangatlong strategy siguro is uh, yung coaching, yung edtech coaching within, no? within, the, uh, within the schools. Kailangan meron talagang somebody inside the school, uh, mapa-co-teacher man yan or mapa-administrator that is really pushing for um, coaching in, in terms of really giving the technical um, technical support doon sa ating mga kaguroan. Kasi hindi naman lahat expert, di ba? Hindi naman lahat uh, ganun ka-tech savvy. Meron talagang mga uh, co-teachers tayo na kailangan talagang bigyan ng push, no? ng support at ng coaching so that ma-reach nila yung level wherein they could maximize the use of of technology in their uh, instruction. At uh, yung pang-apat na strategy siguro, Sir Bodge, would be, at ito yung gusto ko parang i-highlight, is for us teachers to understand that technology is just a tool. Sabi nga ni Bill Gates, sabi niya, um, technology is just a tool in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them. The teacher is the most important. Tayo pa din. Tayo pa din yung uh, nasa center stage wherein we are the ones who are facilitating the learning the teaching and learning process, and at the same time, we are the ones who are guiding the kids. So, napaka-important uh, na maklose yung gap between curriculum at yung technology. At nakadepende yun um, sa strategic abilities natin as teachers. Um, sabi nga ni Sir Jeff kanina, um, marami ng tools. Marami ng tools, marami ng applications na nasa um, mainstream market ngayon, no? mainstream net. So, kailangan naman talaga tayo as teachers may equip tayo on how to select among the many technological tools that we have at our disposal yung the best tool for the lesson at hand. Tingnan din natin, yung objective ba ng lesson, kailangan ba talagang mayroong edtech integration or, or okay nang wala? Kasi hindi, sabi nga ni Ms. Jen, hindi naman sa lahat ng panahon kailangan mayroong edtech integration. Eh. Kailangan tingnan mo din yung objectives mo. Uh, yung objectives ba kinakailangan ng educational technology support coming from this tool so that ma-maximize mo yung learning process? Um, kailangan ba na mayroong specific 
uh, application na, na kakailanganin for you to reach the goal of that lesson na, ma, na mapaintindi mo effectively yung ibig mong ituro sa mga bata. Like, um, an additional no, um, is also yung t- teacher's um, knowledge and skills at using various strategies for selecting the best techno- technology tools for the lesson at hand. Um, teachers must be able to select these, no? Um, kasi ito yung parang actual definition talaga na sinasabi nating effective technology-infused learning. Yung tinatawag ni Sir Bodge na teachnology, di ba? Um, and also, likewise, yung mga learners din natin must be offered the opportunities to select the best technolo- technological resources when um, when completing learning tasks and presenting their learning. And uh, developing teachers' and learners' knowledge and skills in selecting these technologies for the lesson at hand would be the uh, would be the principal driving force talaga behind all technology initiatives in schools. So, um, sa atin pa rin nakasalalay, at the end of the day, tayo pa rin as teachers yung punot punot dulo ng lahat when, when it comes to effectively integrating edtech in our classrooms and in general in our curriculum. Sir Bodge? Yes, napakaganda na ang sinabi ni Sir Gab. So shout out lang sa mga students ni Sir Gab na kasama natin dito. Siguro, uh, nagte-take down notes kayo, students. Tingin ko susunod na quiz ninyo, lalabas siyang tanong na <laughs> discussion ni Sir Gab. <laughs> so, Uh, habang nagkakaroon tayo ng magandang discussion dito sa ating mga kasama sa oh, please sa ating mga kasamang nanonood ng ating live webinar ngayon uh, teachers and to our uh, students na kasama natin ngayon kung meron po kayong once again mga tanong or clarifications sa paggamit ng Rolljack or anything about how to maximize the use of Rolljack gamitin po natin ang chat box and kami po, dito sa Rolljack Pilipinas team, we will do our best and try our best to answer those questions or queries. Pero bago po tayo pumunta sa mga questions ninyo, if ever meron man, pumunta naman tayo sa mga experiences ng ating mga teachers sa paggamit ng Rolljack. Pero this time, hindi naman sa, not just on the good side na parang sinasabi natin, but let's go on the challenges. So, eto naman sa challenges, Uh, that you have encountered with the use of this new tool in your classroom and ano kaya yung tip na masasabi mo or what are the different tips that you can share to our to our audience right now that uh, led you to overcome these different challenges so this one uh, una idirect ko sa um, sa co-teacher namin ni Sir Franco sa Xavier uh, Cleve Okay, so there are three things that I noticed or took note as challenges while using Rojack. I think the number one thing would be familiarization of different activities. I think, you know, with our, from our talk with Mr. Aditya, we've been introduced to the plethora of activities that we can use. Rojack really has a lot to offer. And I think the main tip that I can give is that Uh, to attend webinars like these to explore the app. Uh, I think it's useful for us to go on with onboarding with the app. And it has been, you know, uh, prior to this, we we as the Rojack Filipinas team have been introduced to these different activities. And for sure, these have helped us become better or well-equipped with the different activities Rojack has to offer. So, You might notice as you explore Rolljack that uh, you know basic. There are basic activities that are easy to understand, but as you go on and explore it further, there will be more activities that will have more parts. And just to reiterate what Miss Jenny Lu and Sir Gab has mentioned, uh, you know, if we have better familiarization of these different activities we can integrate these activities to target specific or appropriate knowledge and skills uh, in our classes. So in order to maximize these and integrate them to our lessons well, we need to learn more about these activities and how suitable they are to use. I think second would be introducing the app to the students. So since we have to assume that, you know, in pandemic learning that 
they are already familiar with different apps already. And we might think that they would get Rollback immediately. So I assume that I assume this that you know since they already they're already accustomed to other apps that they would just figure it out uh, immediately. So as a result of that, a lot of students were asking me questions like, "What will we do, sir? How will I draw? Uh, how do I navigate this?" So I think uh, the a simple tip that I could give is to introduce the app to the students before using it, step by step, uh, especially with those uh, four-step activities, three-step activities. I think it's important to explain the process step by step because we shouldn't assume that students know how to use these apps even if they are using other apps. This would make it very easy for us teachers to implement it. I think lastly would be about the sushi. I think there's really, uh, there's, I see a problem with the sushi, although it is uh, a good way to improve classroom engagement. I think a possible problem may be that students would be more excited for the sushi cutting instead of the actual activities. And it's really entertaining for students. Let's give them that. But uh, as a result, it may lower the quality of their work. They would want to answer the prompts immediately or sketch quickly in order to uh, return to sushi cutting. I remember a student, uh, I asked the class, one, one of my classes one time, what do you remember from the activity? Uh, this student said, sushi. <laughs> so I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's important uh, to know proper pacing with uh, when to, you know, to skip the waiting time when necessary. And, you know, let's be wise with our transitions. Let's get them hooked or engaged enough with the sushi, but also proceed with activities with quality. Okay, and I think that's it. Ayun, so napakaganda nung sinabi ng ating... Uh... Ang pinakabata sa ating grupo, yung una, dapat hindi lang yung mga teachers yung nakakaalam ng ating app, kundi yung mga students. So, lagi din natin itong naririnig sa ating mga uh, co-teachers dito sa KTS na nagbibigay ng kanilang mga uh, training sa ating mga kasamahang guro. At yun, uh, nag-a-agree ako talaga kay Pri doon sa sinabi niya na yung paggamit ng sushi, yes, yung mga estudyante, they look forward to it, pero yun nga, minsan, yung quality ng kanilang response, medyo bababa. So, nasa teacher pa rin natin, yung ating, us as teachers, nasa atin pa rin kung paano natin uh, mas ma-explore ma na gamitin ang role jack, kung kailan yung engagement with the waiting time, and kung kailan i-end yung waiting time. So, siguro, uh, other challenges na na-experience naman ni Sir Jeff, and how were you able to overcome these challenges? Sir Jeff? Mm. Sige, sige. Ayan. Um, when it comes to challenges, actually, yung iba doon nasabi na ni, ano, ni, ni Sir Cliff a while ago, no? Nabanggit niya na kanina. And even sa akin, in my case, in higher education, it's still happening. Um, muna, familiarity with the tool. Kaya, in, uh, in my case, as one of the solutions would be, in the very beginning, regardless kung, regardless kung ano klaseng edtech tool, walk them through. Walk them through, be familiar with it. Kasi you cannot eliminate the attempt for them to ask questions pero minimizing the attempt to uh, for them to inquire about the tool itself, yun, much better. At least familiar sila doon. Then another would be um, what if hindi mo na-anticipate that things will go the other way around? Like for instance, yung sushi kanina. Perfect example. A while ago, I was a participant. Participant ako kanina during the, during the, the session of ano, Sir Adi. Mas nag-focus ako doon sa sushi. In fact, naka-1,100 sushi ako sa lahat ng nangyari kanina. Lahat nung um, pause time kanina. 1,100 sushi. The, the, the most number of slices I had. O, oh, diba? And then, instead of me response, uh, responding doon sa mga activities, the perfect situation happened. <laughs> the non-example of um, appropriate tech integration happened. 
And as the teacher, being the instructional designer, challenge yon. Kasi alam mo yung benefit ng tool. Yet, hindi mo na-anticipate na pwede mangyari yun. So, pwede mo sabihin sa kanila straightforward. Like in, sa case ko, I can say it to my students, say, since they are teachers, they are future teachers, and even in my sessions also outside ng uh, work ko as a college faculty, I say, to, I say it to my um, participants also that we, they must be aware when it comes to when to use or when not to use these tools. Very important. And also another thing, um, ever since pa, before the pandemic ito, feedbacking. Um, students demand real-time feedback. Real-time, huh? Real-time feedback. And there are lots of tools available that they are capable of feedbacking. And sa atin sa teachers, monitoring yung mga data na nakuha natin from the activity. Na pwede natin makuha at any time. And talk about feedbacking. So one student of mine um, mentioned this just recently. Sir, what if hindi namin, hindi namin kasi hindi nagsasabi ng response sa amin or hindi nagbe-mention ng hindi siya sabi sa amin or meron pa nag, nakas, naka, nakakita ng error na kahit hindi ka mag-respond, may points ka pa rin. Meron. Earlier, dun sa activity earlier, hindi ako nag-respond dun sa electron configuration. Mahalay ko ba naman dun? Di ba? Pero meron akong 200 points. Hmm. Meron ako 200 for not responding. Di ba? So, yung mga ganun kalit na detalye. Pero yung implication niya when it comes to processing the learnings, processing everything that happened during that particular session, since our pacing is of great importance, di ba? Um, paano natin may utilize yun? And in our case, how are we going to still deliver quality of instruction with, and with or without the tool? So, paano mo siya na-overcome? Number one, um, anticipate. You anticipate. Hindi pwede hindi eh. With or without the tool, you anticipate certain scenarios in your instructional time that learning might not happen. Isa yun. Pangalawa, troubleshooting. Pero you can troubleshoot if you're not familiar with the tool. Right? And ito, classic, very classic na solution, patience. Teachers, pasensya. Sometimes it may not go your way, pero haba mo pasensya mo and do some, make some alternatives and it will work. So, ayun, that's, that's my concise answer to the question. Back to you, Ambassador Alvin. So, thank you very much uh, sa napakagandang uh, discussion, boss, uh, Sir Jeff. So, yung susunod naman siguro na uh, pag-uusapan natin, uh, this is more on your other experiences or other ideas siguro or suggestions kung there are, what are the other ways na pwede nating gawin or exploration sa paggamit ng ating app. Kasi alam natin yung mga as, mga kasama po natin ngayon dito sa uh, sa call na ito uh, para lang sa ating mga ibang audience, they have been exploring different apps as well. They're ambassadors of various apps. Kaya alam nila, um, they have ideas already on which app is best or anong app ang mas magandang gamitin for different activities. So, so, so ito naman yung last siguro na question natin na Itatanong ko ay babato ko this time sa inyong apat or sa inyong lima rather. What other ideas or your other experiences can you share with our teachers and learners when it comes to the use of Rolljack in the classroom or outside, uh, even outside the classroom? So siguro this time, uh, unahin natin si Ma'am Jen. Ayan. Magtatas na sana ako ng kamay. <laughs> so when um I I would like to emphasize on the classroom management because as as the user as the facilitator if you're a teacher kailangan mabilis ang mata because kids can put something inappropriate especially in the image in the first place so kailangan mabilis ang mata unang una uh, doon sa, sa intro, di ba, you draw your avatar. Doon pa lang, kita agad. That's okay. Pero, when you are you are integrating it really and rolling it out, the output will be presented after the after the task. Ngayon, kung baba, 
we we are supposed to give immediate feedback sabi nga ni sir kailangan mo i- i-highlight yung mga stuff and at the same time that you're highlighting important outputs of the students you should also be able to be quick enough to hide those that are not supposed to be given attention kasi kapag hindi mo binas yung art of reading kailangan mauna kang magbasa bago ka magsalita para ma, para hindi na nila mapansin yung hindi nila dapat mapansin and and also uh, sabi nga ni sir uh, kailangan magpractice ka so in your orientation to your students especially in the beginning of the of the semester or or whatever uh, term you are in kailangan alam nila yung do's and don'ts you have to be firm on your rules and you don't break your own rules because that's really a consistency with the use of the app. And they know that they are, are liable to whatever they put in the platform. Um, ito yung secret ko, pero ngayon hindi na. Ang sinasabi ko lagi is, the good thing about any edtech platform is everybody can see most of what uh, is being presented. But the unfortunate event is whatever you put in my platform, it's only me that can erase. So that will be my my evidence kung aabot tayo sa guidance o hindi. Tayo lang bang dalawa or classroom lang ba? And that's giving them a warning at the same time making them aware that what they have to think before they click, they have to think before they write. So classroom management is really vital in the use of any platform, especially uh, if it's on a live basis. So thank you very much. Uh, Kap Jen, napakaganda po talaga na talagang yung power ng teacher when it comes to uh, classroom management. So siguro naman next na tatanungin natin if there are other tips or tricks uh, from Sir Mark. Well, Sir, sa akin naman po, ano, uh, since I, I'm a science teacher, is uh, one uh, experience that I can share is a uh, the yung pag inject ko ng tatawag nating steam sa pagtuturo using rollcheck kasi uh, there's this feature where uh, in rollcheck na yung mga bata can express their creativity using the app and yun nga lang ano sabi ni Captain sabi rin nila Sir Jeff ano and sabi ng ating mga kasama na uh, we should set the rules first why para alam ng mga bata what they can and what they can't para hindi rin ma-compromise sa huli kung ano yung kalalabasan ng kanilang outputs kasi we should remember that we're doing this to achieve our objective and uh, kung hindi natin ma-attain yung objective natin and it's more of naging distraction sa bata is magiging fail yung paggamit natin ng edtech app so yun nga Sabi ng lahat ay, we should establish first kung ano yung mga kailangan, ano yung mga dapat malaman bago natin uh, gamitin yun. So, orientation is really necessary. And uh, kahit yung walkthrough na sabi nga kanina ni Sir Jefano. So, yun yung isa sa mga experience na maishishare ko na pag e inject ng creativity when it comes to the uh, class lessons na ginagamit natin through Steam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Kap Mike, yung next naman po, natanungin natin si Sir Jeff about your experiences or any other ideas na pwedeng i-share sa ating mga teachers. Mm, okay. Sige, i- ano lang natin. I-gawin natin concise. Ano. Una, when, um, ako bilang ano, uh, EdTech teacher, I teach technology for teaching and learning, one and two, um, sa future teachers and also professionals. Kasi there are also professionals sa gusto magturo. And luckily enough for me, um, sa case ng mga professionals, they are also using these tools not only for their work, for also their personal purposes. So I have to consider their context as well. And uh, na mag- maganda, um, ka- una talaga is walking them through the tool. Bakit? Una, sa'yo, mastery. Alam, mararamdaman ng students that you know the tool very, very well. And on their end, malalaman nila, na, ah, okay. Alam pala ni teacher, di ako dito. So, they will take your tool seriously. Kasi there are instances that they will not participate. They will make some excuses. And you have to anticipate that also. Kasi, what if 
that thing happened eh syempre ang dinisign mo you designed that particular learning experience using that tool diba eh sometimes students are very intelligent nowadays na they would think of ways not to participate pero they actually can so yun in terms of that um haba mo pasensya mo and anticipate then pangalawa um you also carefully think of that appropriate tool um kanina nabanggit na ni Sir Gab yung um ano yung effective technology infusion yon uh sure pinagsama-sama niya lahat yung isa isang matrix ng tech integration sa isang term na yun eh no oh <laughs> diba pero ano lang yon ang ang pinaka gusto ang pinaka sense sa sinabi ni Sir Gab and I want to piggyback on that would be yung ano ba talaga pag sinabing appropriate technology in- integration, especially on our end as teachers. Di ba? Kasi tayo nakakaalam nung lesson natin, alignment sa objectives or learning outcomes, ano man tawag dyan. Di ba? Tayo nakakaalam nun. And when to use or when not to use these tools, not only role jack, no? not, uh, when to use or when not to use them, yun ang sinasabi nating appropriate tech integration. So, mas marami kang tools na alam, better. And ano ba dapat yung gagamitin ko? It will be up to you. Nasa atin pa rin yun, we still have the power as teachers. Hindi natin pwedeng isa alang-alang lahat sa technology. Nandiyan pa rin tayo. By the name of it, uh, the name of the um, webinar itself, kagapay. Kagapay natin ang technology when it comes to delivering quality instruction. Hindi na natin may kakaila. Diba? Our, the presence of technology is there. And that's why there are tools like this for us to um, explore and discover its potential para ma-deliver natin sa mga learners natin not only the outcomes for the lesson but also in general or in lo- uh, longer terms, quality instruction. So familiarity and ano ba ba? Familiarity, you talk about adapting to the situation and of course, um, appropriate utilization of tools when needed. Yeah. So that's what I can share or my ex- my my experiences recently when it comes to um, integrating tools. Yeah. Thanks. So thank you very much, uh, Coach Jeff. Sa akin siguro para isummarize ko sa acronym yung sinabi ni Sir Jeff. FAA. Familiarity. Uh, <laughs> adaptability and appropriateness. Kaya lagi-lagi tayong huwag natin kalimutan mag-FAA teachers. Okay? Yung next naman nakakausapin natin uh, si Clean. Uh, okay, thank you, Sir Bodge. Okay, just like the others, I think it's really important to have good expectation setting with your students. But something I'd like to emphasize would be labeling, or in particular, uh, naming, uh, giving clear instructions to your students on how to name themselves during a Rojak activity like class number, first name, last name. I think uh, we need to enforce this. There would be cases wherein students will be using innuendos or uh, use jokes as names. And I think if they use proper naming, this will give uh, more accountability to students uh, with their work. So that, you know, to begin with, we already have a name to credit if they did well and to call them out if ever they need extra help. So at least uh, we'll, we'll be able to correct their misunderstanding about the lesson and make sure that they will work harder knowing that their work and their name will be shown to everyone. So this gives us to an opportunity to address them individually when needed while engaging with the whole class as well. Okay, so that's it, Sir Podge. Go ahead. So thank you very much uh, for that, Cleve. So yun pa rin, the importance of our classroom management, but this time more specifically on working on the labels ng ating mga students. Na I believe talagang magandang idea din yun na ibinigay sa atin ni Sir Cleve. So next naman, uh, Kaduo, Sir Gab, what are, what's your take on this question? Ayan, ako ata yung magra-wrap up, no? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I would just like to put it, put this out there, no? Nasabi na nila, um, kailangan yung effective classroom management, the Miss Jen, yung meaningful integration, um, meaningful integration of edtech sa ating mga lessons, accountability, very important yon, accountability. 
um, nasabi din kanina ni uh, Sir Jeff yung mastery tsaka yung familiarity. Um, it was also highlighted by Sir Cleve yung clarity din. No? Clarity in giving instructions and in your expectations. Buti na lang talaga, hindi pa nila na-mention yung sasabihin ko ngayon. Um, siguro yung last na to is um, using data to guide instruction and improve student learning. Yan, di ba? Um, yung mga applications ngayon, most especially yung mga apps natin na uh, uh, that are more focused on assessments, di ba? Um, nagbibigay yan ng data analytics sa atin. So, tayo as teachers, di ba, sabi nga nila, a picture may be worth a thousand words, but for us teachers, information speaks volumes. Di ba? Sabi nga natin, um, yung data talaga, di ba, um, kinakain natin yung data every day. Every day. Every step of the lesson, kinakain natin. Um, ano to, ah, figuratively, ah, kasi um, data analysis Um, can provide a snapshot of what students know, uh, what they should know, and what can be done to meet their academic needs. At sa atin nakasalalay yung responsibility as teachers um, to give an appropriate analysis and interpretation of these data coming from this, di ba, um, a myriad of applications that we have. Tayo as educators, Um, can make informed decisions that positively affect student outcomes. So, napaka-importante talaga. And at some point, parang um, tayo, nalulos tayo doon sa enjoyment, doon sa engagement, but at the same time, at the end of the day, yung data talaga, yung data analytics na nakukuha natin from these engagements, gamitin natin yon to uh, to give no an effective or to provide ourselves an avenue to effectively plan out lessons for our learners. Hindi lang ito for um, elementary school educators, the secondary, but lahat na nasa education sector. Data really gives us um, direction. That's why kailangan data-driven tayo. So that alam natin kung saan natin ta-targetin yung class natin, saan ba sila mahina, dun tayo pumasok. Saan ba sila Uh, magaling, dun, mas na, dun natin bigyan pa ng more exercises, more engagements. And basically, in strategic planning din, di ba, for our education leaders na um, or are also watching the live stream. Data dapat, data-driven kailangan. Yan, Sir Bodge. So yan, so napaka-importante din talaga ng ating, mag-gather nating data para mapagplanuhan natin ang ating mga susunod na activities at mas, mas, mas maintindihan natin ang ating mga uh, studyante. At syempre, ang uh, makikita natin, uh, nakita natin na ipakita din ito kanina ni uh, Adi yung importance ng reports where we can gather the data na sinasabi din ni Sir Gab sa ating, sa ating activities sa uh, Rolja. So yun, uh, maraming maraming salamat po uh, muli sa ating mga panelists at uh, napakaganda ng ating mga discussion, napaka-rich ng inyong mga ideas at sana maging helpful ito sa ating mga teachers at sa ating mga future educators na kasama natin sa webinar at sa mga susunod na manonood ng ating webinar lalo lang, lalong lalo na on how to maximize role jack in the classroom and in your respective schools. So ayun po, um uh, Nung bumisita ako sa ating uh, chat box, parang wala naman po tayo nakita mga questions at it seems that maganda naman yung uh, reception ng ating mga teachers sa ating discussion for today. So, yun yung next na, na nating uh, gagawin uh, from the KPS or Kaagapay Teacher Support is to give the certificate of uh, appreciation to our panelists. So, uh, let me read the citation. So the first one is the Certificate of Appreciation is respectfully awarded to Cleve Liwanen for sharing his knowledge and expertise in the recently concluded webinar entitled Introduction to Rolljack and panel discussion with Filipinas team awarded on September 10, 2022, signed by Franco Nicolo P. Adon, the Administrator of Kaagapay Teacher Support. So the same certificate is also awarded to Sir Jeffrey Beltran, uh, Gabriel Educado, Ma'am Jenny Luriel, 
and Mr. Mark Bagsik. So maraming maraming salamat po sa ating, ay meron din po pala ako teachers, thank you very much Sir Franco. Uh, thank you very much to our panelists and to our, uh, to those who are joining us in the live webinar. So let us give or let us thank our panelists for sharing their ideas to all of us. So yun, uh, parang yung last na siguro to wrap up our discussion for today, yun nga, yung importance ng FAA at ng data. So wag po natin kalimutan, pag nagfaa, makakakuha ng data. Di ba, teachers? So yung next po siguro na that, uh, next is on our, uh, this, so for our evaluation. Um, we will also have our photo op muna with our uh, CEO. So Adi, thank you for joining us once again and thank you for staying all throughout the discussion with us. So to yeah, our, no to our panelists, I thought it was super insightful. <laughs> Although I couldn't understand bits of it. <laughs> Very insightful. Yes, uh, don't worry, we didn't say anything bad. <laughs> <laughs>